My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Heath Halbrooks. I go online as the Dire Bear AC or Dire Bear GM on Twitch. On Mondays, I run the Escorts, which is a 5e homebrew game for my network, which is Dire Bear Adventuring Company. On Twitch, it's Dire Bear GM. Uh, we have shows four nights a week right now. On Wednesday nights, you can catch me over on Nerdsmith, and where I run City of Mist game called Obscurum. It is a crime noir set in 1949 and it is all in black and white literally and we're all in costume wearing trilbies and fedoras uh dressed in old-fashioned doctor's outfits and we have an actress with us who is dressed up in like really nice gear every, every week and so check that out it's a lot of fun a very narrative game um my character that we're interviewing tonight is brimlow uh brimlow hanagar a goliath who is a cleric now, but has had many jobs, mostly roughhousing and strong-arming people out of money. Um, didn't take, didn't like it. Uh, so there you go. That is me, and that is him. I once met a lad who stole my heart, but it wasn't made to last. The bottom part had legs, but a top part was that of a bass. It's not every day you see someone such as yourself walking, singing into a tavern. You seem particularly cheerful. Of course. I'm on the right side of the dirt. Um, I got all my health about me. Most of me wits. And uh, I just got off with a drink. I think that's a good day all around. My name's Brimlow. <laughs> Sounds like a very good day indeed. My name is Estrella. What brings you to, um, the, to these parts? Wait a minute, go back. H how do you say that again? Estrella. Do you got a short of a nickname? Like, sir? You can call me Izzy. I've been called that before. Okay, see, now that I can say that other thing, I, I'm not sure what you were saying, but I'm pretty sure that I couldn't say it. So, Izzy, it's, <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Izzy. What brings you to these parts? Um, adventure, fame, fortune, mostly adventure, occasionally a wagon. A wagon brings me here and there. I get on a wagon, I follow the wagon, I help the people out who are driving the wagons, I punch things. Sorry, where was I? Wagons, yes. Yeah, wagons. So I gather that you travel quite often. Um... You say that. I'm a bit of a get around. I like to not plant my feet too long in any one particular place. <laughs> kind of comes with the territory of being a a cleric of the storm and all that. A storm cleric? I haven't run into many of those, but I've befriended some. What drew you to that? <laughs> uh, I sort of uh, fell into it all by accident, honestly. See, I was uh, I was out at sea on a boat, and the boat got caught up in a storm and crashed the boat. I'm the only one that was left alive. I washed up on a on the beach of a of a small island. There was a, a man standing there in a tattered robe. He told me that there was a dark and stormy thing about me, and I told him that I'm not sure what he means by that. But he said, "Listen, worship me and." I'll give you power. Well, I followed other bastards around before, and it didn't really work out for me, so I kind of explained to him, listen, I'll so destruction in your name. I'm not going to follow you. Let me do what I want to do, and you can do whatever it is you want to do, and we'll call it even. He laughed and said, most people wouldn't say that. They would cower and beg and plead. And I said, yeah, well, if you're going to strike me down, you're going to strike me down. Not much I can do about that, then there's it. A very interesting start to a relationship indeed. As you said, not many would speak back to a god or hired being like that, but 
I hear they find it very entertaining when people do. Well, he let me live and got me off the island. And every morning I wake up and I say, all right, then, what you got for me today? And that's just kind of how it goes. Very interesting start indeed. Yeah. So what I... were you before you became a cleric? Oh, bit of this, bit of that. Spent some time on the boat. Went about uh, shaking people down for money for some individuals that were not good people. Uh, didn't really like that. And before that, uh, I was a youth. I just kind of knocked people around in the head. It's pretty straightforward life, and I have probably met some of your former employers. Yeah. yeah. They don't like me barely much. That's all right. They write bastards anyway, so screw them. Did you give a sword to any of them? Did you give them a, a good stabbing? No, but I made their lives very, very difficult and put more than one of them in a situation they would rather never find themselves in. Well, then you're all right by my. In my book, I like that. I tell you what, and that streaks on me. Sounds fair. Plus, I find killing people like them is not near, nearly as profitable as having them owe you a favor. Mm, I don't know. It depends on how many of them I'm killing. <laughs> I mean, you know. Not that I've killed anybody who hadn't deserved it. I'm just saying, if, he, if he, you know, they cross my path and they're not good people, and if they find the downside of the concrete, and that's not on me, that's, that was the path that they chose. Maybe they should make questions about their life choices that led them to that point. So, Very true. I've had to knock some sense into several people who are starting down that path, but thankfully they... Got the point before they got the other point. Uh, I think I understand your meaning. Some yeah. of them were very close to getting their kidney stabbed with daggers. Oh, oh, um, yeah. I don't, I don't. I, I hit people with, with the hammer here. It's that's my weapon of choice. I don't really stab the pointy bits into them as. Uh, Hammers can be good for making an impression intimidating many, but if you want to inflict pain or scare <laughs> someone more, sometimes a smaller finder weapon can be much more intimidating, but it all depends on your style. For you, it would probably look like a child holding a butter knife. <laughs> As an image. I've held a few butter knives in my hand. They are really small. Uh, I find that the hammer does a lot of good in, in making sure that if you want a knee broken, that it breaks it right good. And if you want an arm broken, but we'll let them walk around and heal up over time, but not quite heal up properly. So it's like all a little bit at an angle and doesn't have quite the strength that it does before. A hammer's best for that. So I've used a hammer before in my time. It's a wide variety of weapons, actually. When you spend a lot of time on the road working with different groups, sometimes you have to adopt different skill sets. Which is, ironically enough, a skill set of mine. You seem like you will versed in all the mannerisms of killing people what need be killed. So how is it you find yourself here? I used to be an adventurer. I saved the world a time or two, and, but... I found a better way of protecting the world without having it always be me. So I know people, I have connections in many places, and I used to have to keep an eye on things. So if there's ever a situation that looks like it could be world threatening, I know it's strings to pull to set things in motion to make sure that doesn't happen. It's actually a busier job than I thought it would be. It seems a bit complicated for me, honestly. I think I'll go on about my way and just start hitting people what need be hitting. And then blessing them what need be blessing, I reckon. I'm not sure. It's a very straightforward <laughs> way to live. I miss the days when my life was that simple, but it's been a very long time since then. Well, a simple life for a simple man, that's what I say. Not that I'm a simpleton, no. I mean, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> I understand what you mean. You know what I mean. All right, thank you. So are you traveling with anyone now? Not at a moment. 
sort of uh, corner between jobs at the moment. A friend of mine uh, out this way, and I'm going to try to catch up with him. Said he's in Luskin, but uh, Luskin and I got some bad blood. So I'm going to see if I can't get a letter to him to say, hey, meet me up here in Icewind Dale. It's a little nicer up here. I like the snow and ice. Reminds me of home. Where are you from? Uh, originally from the spine of the World Mountain, not too far from here. Been there. It's a lovely place. Some parts are a little treacherous, but it's very nice. Yeah, it's nice enough if you don't mind orcs and dwarves and fighting dwarves and orcs and orcs fighting dwarves. Yeah, it's fine. Thankfully, I know where that tends to happen, so I know which places to avoid for the most part. Well, that's good. I just sort of bumble my way along until I find something that needs uh, needs fixing. And then I fix it, or I at least ask. I don't try to, like, you know, right all the wrongs of the world. I just simply sort of find my way and say, hey, you need any help or not? And if they say yes, then I help them. And if not, I say, all right, where's the tavern? I can very much respect that. So, what trouble does Luskin have with you? <laughs> it's not Luskin per se. It's more one of the guilds that are there. I used to work for them. Um, me and me mate, and then we had a bit of a falling out, and uh, he he don't like me no, no more. It's all right, he's okay still. He got kind of wrapped up in the wrong brew, and uh, you know how it is. You just uh, sort of part ways and steal a bunch of money, you get on a boat, travel away, and then they swear they're gonna kill you the next time they see you because you took some stuff of theirs, and you know how it goes. Which skilled? Is this? Uh, it's a thieves guild. You're the one. I've heard of you. I've heard of that. Don't mm. worry. I'm not going to point anyone in your yeah. direction. I've no affinity for the people that have problems with you. You seem pretty nice, so I appreciate it. I hate to have to hit you in the head with a hammer. I would love to see you try, my friend. I won't. Yeah. I'm not one of them that says I can take anybody who's out there. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm smarter than that. I know there's, somebody, there's always somebody bigger, somebody stronger, somebody that can knock me on my ass. So I'm not much of one that says I'm going to try this. And I'm not also one of them that looks at smaller people and go, <laughs> you're runty and I'm big, so I'm going to take, take advantage of you. Take the mick, if you will. I, I just kind of let people people be who they are i've seen some small people do amazing things and i've seen some big people do dumb small things and so i try not to judge a book by its cover if you will oh how i wish there were more people out there that had the same viewpoint i can't tell you how many people have tried to pick a fight with me and it never works because i have ways of dealing with pretty much anything they can throw at me you seem pretty capable to me so been around for a while. Uh, I ain't been. I've been around for 30, about 37 years now. It's a good time to get some interesting life experiences. Yeah, you know, leave home when you're young and set out to conquer the world or at least get the hell away from whatever small lifestyle they have for you. And then find your way into a small city like Luskin make a friend in the streets, run with him for a while, get picked up by a larger group. They said, hey, your mate's here. He's pretty good and skilled. You, you get a lot of muscle. So why don't you shake people down? And I'm like, eh, so I got nothing better to do. And then I realized that the people they were shaking down, well, they wouldn't do enough but scraping by. And I felt kind of bad about taking their money. So I just eventually said, eh, I lost my taste for it, if you will. My heart wouldn't in it. I said, uh, they noticed that I wasn't taken to it the same way that I used to. And I just told them, I said, it's not fair that we're shaking down these small folk like this. They ain't got much to scrape by. Why are we doing this to them? We should be going for the bigger targets, the bigger fish. And they said, don't worry about that. My job is to keep my mouth shut. And they hit things that they told me to hit. And I said, I'm better than that. So I took off. But again. Not before leaving with, absconding with a little bit of their own cheddar. 
I respect that very much, and it looks like I'm going to have to have a, another point of conversation with the leader of the Thieves Guild, <laughs> because he and I have discussed this. Nah, don't do such a thing on my... Oh, no, it's... it's. Oh, this was ages ago. Yes, previous conversation. I thought we had an understanding. Apparently, we did not. So, I'm going to deal uh, with this more directly this time. Nah, don't go getting a scrape on my account. I ain't not much uh, but a Goliath for, with a little bit of muscle. Oh, and not to mention, it was ages ago. I'm sure they... No, they haven't changed their ways. I know better than that. That's why I'm going to have a conversation with them. I just have to decide how I best want to best approach. Uh, from the back where they sleeping is my suggestion. They change it every once in a while, but it's not hard to figure it out. Oh, 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 I know. If you're not sleeping, catch them while they're on the toilet. They never see it coming. And you literally catch them with their pants down around their ankles. <laughs> Might have to borrow that idea. It gives me... Well, yes, I, I like this idea very much. I don't yeah. even know which form will be the most appropriate. Oh, that, that makes me worry. Don't worry, I'm... Not some sort of demon. There's no need to be concerned. <laughs> right. I'm just... Can be good at disguising myself sometimes. It's a trick mm. that I've picked up over the years. Yeah. As seven feet tall, there's only two things that I can disguise myself as. Uh, a fence post or a, a guard gate door. <laughs> I can get a decent quality mask, some... Paint and you could pass as a dragonborn. Hmm, that's true. Be a bit tricky, but it's a possibility if you ever Especially need to. Especially if they want me to fire out any sort of breath weapon. Only thing I'm shooting out is my bum. It's a sonic attack. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, that was rude. <laughs> For then, there's very little you say that could shock me. I'll take it into consideration. Well, did you travel with anyone else after you left the city? Oh, yeah. I fell in with this really nice fellow. His name is Jarnik. Uh, he's, his fathers are both uh, noblemen. And they were like, look after me, boy. He's a good boy, but he ain't got no experience. So they put me on there to, to look after their son. And we traveled together for some time before, uh, before our travels took us our own separate ways, you will. Did you run into anything interesting on the roads? Ah, uh, you know, the normal things. Bandits would think they can attack a single target on their own. They come to learn out that it's, uh, learn, come to learn quick that I'm not the kind of target that you want to really be attacking. It always astonishes me when bandits choose to attack something that has a Goliath in it. Yeah, well, they figure they can take me because there's like six of them, and one of me, and so... You know, I'm just like, eh, this is not the best choice you've ever made, lads. But, you know, it's all right. Eh? They eventually come to an understanding that they can't take me. And then they make life choices at that point in time that says, I think we're going to set ourselves on a different path. And that's a good choice for them to make because the other choice is that they end up under the debt. Very true. Very true. So, I know sometimes clerics can do things that most others can't. Do you have any such skills mm -hmm. beyond the regular healing? I'm going to assume that you mean in the midst of combat and not extracurricular activities, then? Yes, in the midst of combat. All oh, right, yeah, of course, that's what you mean. Uh, you know, I mean, you could call lightning down, I can make a... I can make it hurt real bad whenever I hit somebody with a hammer. Cast spells and stuff like that, you know? That's like I said, I don't pray for them. I don't wake up and say, oh, dear Lord in the sky, please give me these spells. I kind of just wake up and go, oi, what you got for me today, you bastard? And then that's what I got. You are by far the most interesting and unique cleric I've ever met. Oh, uh... Thank you very much. I'm going to pride myself on being a little bit different every day. But now I, you know, in a Mr. Combat, I'm, I'm more, I would like to say I'm level-headed, but the truth of the matter is, I'm not at all. I walk into this room and there's a bunch of goblins and they're sacking the place. 
Well, I bust the first one in the head and told the other two to give up, and they didn't give up. So I bust them two in the head. I take one of the fallen goblins outside of the main yard. Well, there's a bunch of them. I chuck the body of the fallen fro in their feet, and I say, Oi, you can give up, or you can end up like him. To say the least, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't give up. They ended up like him. I think maybe it's because they don't speak common. I should try to learn goblin. Might have been a different story. Yes, most goblins are not always the most intelligent, but a lot of that assumption comes from the fact that most people forget most goblins don't speak common. Uh, speaking yeah. goblin, it's a useful skill to have, but it's, it's weird to learn. Well, I mean, me and common, we ain't, uh, or me and languages aren't too common together. I speak common, and I understand giant. Can't really speak it real well, but I understand it. It's a lot of rugalitha. But anyway, uh, I ain't really ever tried to learn nothing other than that. The divine stuff just sort of comes to me. Uh, I guess that's part of being a cleric. But that prick Talos, the one that I quote unquote follow, he, uh, he ain't a... He just kind of imparts bits and pieces here on me. And then kind of lets me just be on my own. And do my own thing. Help people where I need to help them. And he don't say nothing as long as I'm bashing a few heads together. Breaking a few barrels and uh, walls and benches over people's heads. I saw a little bit of destruction in his name. And he just kind of lets me move on my own. God, that doesn't interfere in the life of his followers? Never thought I'd live to see the day, and well, I've been around for a while. I think it's because he finds me a bit entertaining. Like, I can follow him around like a sycophant, trying to jam my head up his arse. But the truth of the matter is, uh, I just don't like that way. And I think he finds me entertaining now. And that's one of the reasons why he lets me keep going the way that I am. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Whenever do you... Make comments like shoving his head up his arts. It gives a very interesting mental image. That's okay. <laughs> I think it's what I was going for. Maybe I think so. Yeah, it sounds right. Fair enough. Any other interesting groups you've been a part of? Things you fought? Yeah, there was this uh, this group that I fell in with down around. Um, uh, call me. They were fighting an army of Banites, people who follow Bane. And they had these, uh, oh, what were they throwing? It was like a marble, or like a, like some sort of large rock. Uh, not a large rock, not a boulder, like a, I don't know. It's, a, it's just a, a, like a big marble. Anyways, they would throw it in the middle of the group of Banites. And as soon as it landed, it would like explode and call down this big purple lightning and like tore through this army in just a few moments. I stepped to the front line because I wasn't going to be without a little fun. I hit the first row, caught a group of them right in a blast of a mighty thunder wave. And the next thing you know, they were all blasted to bits. And then I just started waving my hammer, like, and wading through them. Like they were just, you know, uh, ocean break. Just one right after the other. Crashing and bashing around the midst of them. Damn near got taken out by one of the marbles they were throwing. I definitely have to keep an eye over those. It's been a while since I've seen them in action, but I've seen them before. And the first time, it was very awe-inspiring. The second time, nearly took my head off. You learned it that quickly after that. Well, that's what you got to be careful for. It's not that there's so much that they, they're aiming for you. It's just that they're not aiming. And so the next thing you know, boom, you get taken out by some friendly fire. And ain't no place for that. Fortunate reality of battles such as that. Mm, yeah, this is true. You got to keep your head on a swivel. That's what I say. That is true. It's the best way to stay alive. Especially when there's a lot of people want to kill you. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of people that want to kill me. Uh, I assume there is. I assume there's at least two. I know of at least one. But the rest of them I'm not sure about. Is it the friend that you ripped off? 
That would be the one. What's the story behind him? How did you two become friends? Oh, when I left home, I went to Luskin, and that was like the first place that I could think to go. Well, there I am, in the streets. Uh, not really starving, but not really making my way either. So, uh, I fell in and found this Tibble. He was, uh, silver tongue. He was adorable. All the women love him. And he was quick. And I mean, quick. As strong as I am, I'll never be. My strength won't equal his quickness ever. Like the level that he got on. It's amazing to watch him work. He would skit across a, across a roof like a squirrel. It was crazy. But anyways, here we were. Two of us, young. Like 16, 15, 16 on the streets of Luskin. Uh, we made a, uh, we just sort of fell in. We started conning people, making money the only way that we could. Well, the next thing you know, the Thieves Guild comes up talking to him. And he says, Oi, I'm not joining you guys unless you invite my friend. He's got a lot of muscle and some great skills about him. Well, they really particularly care if I came along one way or the other. But they knew they wanted him, and he wasn't going to come without me. So, next thing you know, there we are, in the Thieves Guild. And they're giving him all these sorts of jobs to do. Go here, do this, steal this thing, get in and out like that. And all I'm doing is acting like the tough. I'm walking around, flexing on people. Punching people what need be punching, punching people what need not be punching. Anyways, after a while, we just sort of fell in. He rose to the ranks. And you know how it is whenever you have a, a friend in a workplace that you, you come in together, but he advances a lot faster than you do, so you sort of fall out. It's not that you're angry at one another. You just don't see each other as much anymore. You find a different group of friends to be in. Well, they made him a lieutenant, and that's about the time that I was shaking down people that I didn't feel need to be shaken down. And that's whenever I said, all right, fine, I'm going to take my leave and go. And I uh, did so by taking some of their goods and going. Uh, not a whole lot, but enough to get myself on a boat and get as far away from Luskin as I could, at least for a while. They're still not particularly happy about that. No. And it wasn't even like it was a lot. I didn't even take enough to buy my own boat, just enough to get on a ship. The great thing is, is that it was all well and good. I had gotten away pretty much scot free when I caught another cargo vessel coming back in. I was working, uh, I was working as a bowman, and they had me up working the ropes. Not a problem. I like it. It's good work. Next thing you know, though, I didn't think to ask, "Hey, what port are we setting into next?" And along comes a very familiar port town, Luskin. Imagine your reception wasn't the warmest. <laughs> Well, at first I didn't think nothing of it. I just went about my business the way I always do. And the next thing you know, I see a couple of fellas who were stalking around me. I shake it off, thinking nothing of it, said I'm just going to find my own way, not going to worry about them none, until they caught me in an alleyway. They didn't do nothing to me. Tibble came out, talking to me, saying things like, oh, it's been a long time, mate. We sure have missed you here. Sure would be good to see you back doing what you used to do. You were so good at it, Bremlo. But even though he was using fancy words and had a smile on his face, it was all poison and vile and vitriol. I knew what he wanted. He wanted to see me pay for what I had done. I've heard the whispers of just how poorly he took that incident. Impressive that you made it out alive, but I guess his pride was worth more to him than what you took. When I punched one of his mates and chucked him at him, uh, it gave me a moment to run away. I'm not going to lie. I knew that I couldn't best him, and to be honest with you, I don't want to hurt Dibble. I just wanted to be done with that business and uh, found myself back on a boat. No, no, man. Maybe it was my visit back there to Luskin that kind of tripped everything up because after, as I was leaving, I noticed this storm and I didn't pay no attention. I was just ready to put the city behind me. We're ready for a new, a new direction, a new path. Yeah. 
But it was that boat which took me into the storm which left me where I'm at now. That boat leaving Luskin. It's as though running put me on a path that I can't turn from now. But it's alright. I like my lot in life the way it is. I'm happy. Good way to be. I know there are many who, when life takes an unfortunate turn, they do not handle it very well. But you seem to be adjusting very well indeed. Well, like I said, I'm on the right side of the dirt. Now I've got a drink in front of me. I made a new friend. Life is good today. Tomorrow? Who knows? And we'll take it one day at a time the way we always do. Like one foot in front of the other. One day at a time. Hour by hour. Minute by minute. And if it all goes tits up, so be it. Am I your philosophy, friend? I'm curious, though. Have you ever considered returning home? You mean back to the spine of the world? Nah. Uh, I've considered it a time or two, but to be honest with you, it's more foreign to me than Luskin. In other words, if you was to ask me where I was from, my honest answer is I'm from Luskin. I only lived there for a little while. Until I got to be a, a, about 13, 14 summers. And then I took off. I've known life out in the wilds more than I've known in the spine of the world. So I've never really had anything. And it wasn't like I hard left. There were tears and people searching for me. They knew I was leaving. They knew I didn't fit in. I never really fit in there anyway. So just kind of took my leave. What made you feel like you didn't feel fit in there? It's hard to say, honestly. Um, I wasn't as big as some of the others. And uh, well, at least at that time, <laughs> sort of grew into that. But I don't know. Just never really felt right, you know, like like something else was on the rise for me. And uh couldn't quite put my finger on it, but like I said, just never sort of fit in. Never really got what they were kind of espouting. And not that they're a cult or anything, they just have a sort of tribal way that they live. And I respect that, but it just wasn't for me. So I decided I would try, you know, see what life is like out there in the rest of the world. Perhaps, maybe in the future, you will find your own group or your own tribe. A place that feels like home. And people that feel like home. Perhaps it will be. I like that Jonic fellow. He's the one I was trying to say meet me up in Icewind Dale. So hopefully we'll meet up again. His dads are pretty nice fellows. You said he's in the city proper, yes? Uh, nah, he lives sort of elsewhere. Must have misremembered something. That's all right. Ace new friends, right? We'll get the story straight eventually. One would hope so. One would hope so. But there are some stories out in the world where I'm not sure if we'll ever figure out all that is going on there. And that's okay. Indeed it is. I'll say for that a little mystery. Uh, I don't want to find out. <laughs> and what's life without plenty of idiots who need hitting? <laughs> My favorite kind of idiots. Are you planning on staying for the next few days? Yeah, I don't plan on going anywhere yet. Might catch another caravan, give it a little bit of assistance if it need be. But for the most part, I'm going to be sticking around here. Well, it's good to know I may need your assistance in the next few days. There's... A group of individuals who are proving to be troublesome and having some of your strength could be very useful. Well, I can be read. Yes, also they're holding a friend of mine who I would very much like to see out of their clutches. Well, I can be quite persuasive when it comes to getting people to realize the air they way. Just like, you know, saying, Oi, you don't want to be doing that. I would stop if I were you. And rethink your life decisions that have led you to this point so far. Because I can guarantee you, the next few moments are going to be excruciatingly painful. So, if you need my help, I'm happy to help out, Izzy. And if you are ever in need of assistance, you need only ask. But of course. Even if I cannot be there myself, I do have more than a few favors I can call in. That's a good thing to have in your pocket. 
Then tell them let's have another drink and... I don't know. Surely we can find something to talk about. Certainly. Uh, this one's on me. Fair enough. Not that the barkeep ever charges me anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna get on that level. I may have saved this part from burning down before. You sure do get around a lot. Like I said, this been around for a while. Yeah, that's true. You did say such a thing. How long have you been around for? Guess uh, that's another one of those Mr. Days I was telling you about. Gotcha, gotcha. Mum's a word. Tales of Adventure is directed and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. You can also leave a review on iTunes to make our show easier to find for those who need it.